you can start. Okay, excellent. Well, I am so glad to see everyone and it's nice to see people that I normally see and to see people I don't normally see and to meet new people too. So Sujin, Jin, Burnett, it's very nice to meet you guys. Um, I am going to start out tonight by just talking a little bit about how you can start some seeds inside. Now, typically, it's nice to start seeds inside when it's still a little chillier out. We're in the South. So I grew up a, a good portion of my life in um, the temperate Midwest, where it could be snow on the ground up until like maybe June. So you want to start seeds inside so that you have something to kind of move outside during the actual growing season. Here in Birmingham, because we're in the South, it's not quite as important, but it's kind of nice sometimes to kind of get them going and then be able to transplant them when they're a little bit bigger. And buying seed packets is a lot cheaper than trying to actually buy full grown plants. So it's one way that you can actually grow the seeds into like small seedlings that'll have a better chance of surviving once you transplant them outside. So the first thing that we're gonna walk through tonight is just um, how to start seeds without any soil. A lot of people have newspaper at home. I have like some of these beauty cotton pads. You can use these um, or you can even just use like regular paper towels. And I am so embarrassed because my Mac is just now telling me that I am almost out of battery life. So I'm just gonna go grab my little plug-in so that we don't lose each other. And I'll be right back, guys. I have a question. Does anyone know if you can buy seeds at Publix? I've never seen seeds at Publix. Um, it doesn't mean that you can't, but I've never seen them at my Publix. I haven't seen them at Publix either. I've seen them at Walmart but not public. Um, what about Aldi? I don't go to Aldi. I know a couple of y'all do. Okay. And that's a Sun special offer for the week. All right, here we go. Okay, there. Saved by the plugin. All right. So you can use a lot of different things. You can even use toilet paper. So my point and kind of pointing out all the different things that you can use is simply to say, you don't have to go to a lot of lengths to buy like the seed starting kits that they have at Walmart or even Aldi sometimes. They're super convenient. They're very nice to have the plants grow up into a little already prepackaged like ball of dirt, but we don't all have that kind of money all the time. So. Today, I'm going to be using some of the actual cotton pads that I got. And these you can get for maybe, I don't know, anywhere from between two and four dollars, depending on where you buy them at. And you can get them at CVS, at Walgreens. You can buy them at um, Walmart, too. So you can get them at a number of different places. Now, when you go to start your seeds, you're going to want two layers. All right. And the first layer you'll put in the bottom. Now here I just, this is an old plastic reusable container that I bought that has a lot of like scorch marks, like plants don't care as long as it's clean, doesn't have to be sterile. And um, I just go ahead and I fit it in there. Now this side is a little smaller, so I just cut one in half. and then it fits. But you can use a plate, you can use a lot of different types of um, containers to do this in. If you don't have cats that will eat your stuff, then you can put them on just like paper plates or regular plates, anything like that. I have cats that will eat them. I actually had to lock them in the bathroom tonight because they were hell bent on eating everything and pawing around in my dirt. And I couldn't convince them to stop. So they had to go. So now we have our couple little pieces of cotton here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and spray them down until they're wet. And actually it's a little quicker because it's cotton and it wicks so nicely. 
I can just go ahead and pour some in just until the cotton itself is actually saturated. You don't want it to be too, too wet because then the seeds might actually mold. Um, but you do want it to be moist enough to where it's actually gonna provide the kind of environment that they need to, to grow it. But you can do it any, you can spray it too if you want to. Spray, 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 okay. Now, once you've saturated the bottom parts, then what you're gonna do is go ahead and you're gonna wanna take out some of the seeds that you wanna grow. So I decided that I would like to actually grow some echinacea. So I bought these just at Walmart. Actually, I think these ones came from Home Depot, but I usually clip aside and that's what the tape will be for later because we'll close this up. And then you can just Spread the seeds out like so. And then you can place the other piece right on top. And then you're gonna wanna go ahead and saturate that top piece. With water. And there you go. Now it's in there, it's in the container. And then we'll go to the other side. And so I will get my tape and I'm just gonna tape up my little bag of seeds here so that they don't spill. And I think for the next thing, I'm gonna start some basil because I like herbs. So with the basil, once again, you can just take some of the seeds and just sprinkle them onto the actual cotton or paper towel. And then place the second piece on top and then go ahead and wet it down. Hey, Melissa? Yeah? Are there any seeds that you do or don't recommend? Well, you can't, you can't um, grow bulbs this way. So a bulb is too big. <laughs> you can't do a bulb. Um, I don't know that there are any seeds that I would or would not recommend. I did try. So I wanted you guys to be able to see what it looked like when they had grown up. So I started some a couple weeks ago. And you can see this right here is my cilantro. And then here on this side, those itty bitty, it looks like a just a lush forest of little itty bitty trees with only two leaves. That actually is chamomile. And then on this side here, what I did was I like, um, I like bell peppers a lot. And so I usually, when I eat bell peppers and I find some bell peppers that I really find very tasty because I'm always snacking as I cut them up, I will go ahead and if I really like them, I will take the seeds and I will dry them. And so on this other side here, are just some bell pepper seeds that I harvested from a bell pepper that I purchased in the local produce department and cooked for dinner one night. And you can see that they've kind of started to grow here. Um, I did try starting some mint. The mint was not uh, very, it was not successful. None of the seeds that I sowed for the mint actually grew. And I don't know if that was because I kept them too wet or not wet enough. I don't know. I thought I killed my plants because they did dry out a little bit. I left the lids off. And because it's kind of 
it feels like it's a little humid in my apartment, probably just because I had the heat up, but they dried out a little bit. And seedlings are not very resilient all the time to, um, to when they get like really parched. And so I, I thought I had killed them and that I wouldn't actually have like things to transplant so that you guys could see that process, but they, they bounced back. So that was good. So here now we've got both sides, I've planted them. And on this side, I planted my echinacea. So then I just use, here's a dry erase marker, which Sarah has just educated me on the absolute breadth of uses for dry erase markers besides on a dry erase board. And I will just write on the side of the container, echinacea so that I know what it is I put there. I oh, can't see that very well. And then on the other mm -hmm. side, I will just go ahead and put basil. And it wipes off really easy so that I can continue to use this over and over again and I don't necessarily have to worry about it. <clears throat> like really having to scrub or having to like cross out and do that. And then if you put them on plates, just know that because they're open to air, they might dry out a little faster. So you have to watch them just a little bit more closely as they grow and make sure that the cotton stays wet, paper towel, et cetera, et cetera. Insert growth material here. Um, but I do like to put a little lid on here and then that just helps it to be more like a little bit of a greenhouse as opposed to being so open. And then it retains the, the moisture a little better. Mm -hmm. All You're right. Every day, Melissa? Yes. Did, did I miss something? Did somebody say something? Oh, no. I just asked if you water them every day. Like, do you splash it with water every day? No, I don't splash it with water every day. What I will do is I will just kind of feel the cotton. And if it still feels nice and um, saturated, then I will not water it. And I'll just wait until it really starts to dry out. Uh, with the lids on these, I have only had to add water maybe, I don't know, like three or four times in the last couple weeks, except when I left it open and then it dried out pretty good. But these are also kind of thick cotton pads. So you can see that they have some, they have some absorbability here. If you use something like paper towel, that's much thinner. And so paper towel is gonna dry out much faster than say like these thick absorbent cotton pads would. So you would have to just monitor them a little bit more often if you use something like toilet paper or paper towel. Okay, that's a great question. The nice thing too about using like some old containers and you don't even have to use like old containers. You can use old, uh, you can use small yogurt containers. A lot of yogurt containers have lids on them now like Nusa, that's one that comes with a lid on it even though it's not clear. So I do recommend something that has kind of a clear lid but um, you know, you can use a variety of different kinds of containers for this and you don't necessarily have to uh, have to go out and buy like really fancy stuff. This right here is a small tomato container that I got some tomatoes in. And you can see it's nice and clear. So a lot of produce containers, or if you buy like pre-packaged um, sunflower seeds or other things will come in plastic containers that you can use now this does have a couple holes in the bottom. So when you use it, you might have to put it on a plate or something like that. But you could definitely fill this with soil or even just lay your cotton inside that and then be able to close it up and let the seeds grow inside something like this too. So there are a number of different types of ways that you can just use the things that you buy already and um, just kind of repurpose them so that we're reusing, reducing and recycling as we go along. I know that's a song that Sabrina really likes. <laughs> Reduce, reuse, and recycle. 
I don't even know what that's from, but it's stuck in my head for all eternity. Okay, so now that we have our seeds planted in some cotton, and we're gonna let those grow for the next couple of weeks, what I would like to do is go ahead and transplant some of the ones that we've already grown. Actually, yeah, we'll go ahead and transplant some of these. Now, I had not really used cotton quite as much as I had used paper towels before, but I really wanted to try using cotton because I know that it's a little bit more absorbent. And because we're all busy, we're in school, we don't have a lot of time. Um, I wanted something that might retain the water so I wouldn't have to monitor and kind of like mother it quite as much. But one thing I did not anticipate is the fact that these, the roots have actually grown into the cotton. Now, I have a little pair of my geek tweezers here. You can use your fingers, I'm just using tweezers. And I'm gonna get really close here just to kind of show you guys that I will grab one and just very gently, nope, okay. So I broke that one off, sorry. Okay, these ones might be a little bit too grown up to do that with. So if that's the case, then cutting the cotton is always the backup. Like you can always cut the cotton and then just plant it with the plant in something new. Okay, let me use my fingers though and see if I can pull this up kind of gently. Nope. Okay. So I wondered about that. Yeah, because I started them a couple weeks ago, I think that the roots have grown into the cotton. So there's just life lesson in action. You guys get to see it here first. So I might not wait two weeks before transplanting these. I might wait until you just start to see them kind of pop out of the seeds and then I would transplant them so that they don't actually grow into the cotton. And I only say that because this is definitely not biodegradable. And so I wouldn't necessarily want to use this to like transplant all the time because we want to be environmentally sound. If you're just transplanting into containers, that might not be too bad, but. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and I'll just cut some of the cotton here where the plants have grown. And then like a couple of these, I can probably pull off here. Here's a couple. Okay, so there's one. I don't know if you guys can see that real well. It's a little seed that sprouted, hasn't grown too much. All right, and then this one, I was able to get the actual roots out with this little one. So we'll transplant these two for right now. And you can use a lot of different types of containers for transplanting too. At this point, I'm not ready to move them into like something really big. So I did recommend having some eggshells handy. Okay, so with the eggshells here, we can go ahead and I just washed them out and you can put a little bit of dirt in there. Doesn't require a lot. And then I'm just gonna stick a pencil in there and make a little hole. And then I'll go ahead and I will drop this right in there and just kind of tamp it down. There we go. And the nice thing about this is that when I am ready to transplant these outside, that I can just transplant them in the eggshells because the calcium is not gonna hurt the plants. And then I'm just gonna give a little spray so it's nice and wet. 
and then there we go. So that's what you can do once it has a, and just to let you know too, eggshells, you can write on them really well with permanent marker. So this is my cilantro. Mm -hmm. So there we go. Good to know as we approach Easter too, right? It's always a time for Easter bunnies and lots of eggs and egg decorating. All right, and then I'm gonna go ahead and just do that one more time with the other little seedling here that is sprouted. And I'm just gonna put him kind of on top. So this one, because the seedling for this one hasn't quite grown up, it's a little thwarted, I'm not going to press it down into the soil too deep because I want the leaves to be able to grow upward. It's amazing. Plants have these really awesome capabilities of like photosensing light. And so then, you know, I want to... then we just spray a little bit with a little bit of water. And then that one is good. Now that's transplanting into dirt ones that you have already grown in some kind of medium other than soil. But we can also use eggshells with dirt in it to go ahead and just start our seeds in too. Unfortunately, I was only eating eggs out of a styrofoam container, but um, I do recommend it's kind of nice sometimes to use the cardboard ones because if the plants grow through and into the cardboard, very nice. You can just cut the cardboard up. It is biodegradable for the most part. And you can transplant it in the garden and it'll just break down as the seeds grow and as the summer progresses. And then, so what we'll do now is I'm gonna go ahead and pick out one more seed type here. Well, you know, let's, I'm going to go a little crazy. I feel like some cantaloupe would be delicious. So I'm going to plant a few cantaloupe seeds. And it's just the same process, basically. I'm just going to write on the eggshell. We're going to throw a little dirt in the eggshell. And then when you plant seeds fresh out of the packet together, I would only recommend maybe planting anywhere from two to three seeds. And that can be harder if the seeds are really tiny, in which case you can just use a toothpick and kind of wet it a little bit. You can have some water or you can kind of lick it and then just pick up some of the tiny seeds. Like if you pour them out onto a small dish or something like that, that is one way if they're really tiny for you to be able to try and just plant a few together at a time. And um, fortunately for us, cantaloupe seeds are actually a little bit bigger. And so we don't have to worry about that quite so much. But I will go ahead and just plant them in there and we'll tamp that down. And then just spray it until the soil is nice and wet. And then I can do that. So then you can just go through and basically repeat that process in each eggshell. And then you want to make sure that you put them in the sun somewhere. They do want a little bit of sun. Okay. There we go. Actually, yeah, I don't need those other ones. Okay, there. Okay. Now, the other thing that I want to transplant really quickly are some of the, where's the other container here? Some of the smaller ones. So 
you can see on this piece right here that there's just like a little forest of chamomile growing. And so with this one, what I did was um, not too long ago, I got something shipped to me and the package had some inserts that were made out of like some of that biodegradable uh, cardboard. And then I did order a couple t-shirts online too. And so I have some of the plastic that comes around, you know, the t-shirts you get through the mail when you order them from any of the fill in the blank stores that you order from. And so that way it's a little bit more waterproof. I've just taped that around there. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna transplant this by placing this like right here. And then what'll happen is those will just grow into the soil through the cotton because that's a lot of little roots I don't wanna break and a lot of little plants I don't wanna kill. So we're just gonna do that and let it grow up. And I'm gonna wet that down as well. I can hear my, my cats in the bathroom causing a ruckus. I'm almost afraid to find out what it was they just knocked over. <laughs> okay, and then the last thing I'm gonna do is just one more little planting thing. So this is the bottom of a box that I got something shipped in. And then of course, there's another t-shirt. So I had a couple t-shirts I bought. Here's the plastic from one of the other t-shirts. And I just stuck it in there. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna grow some cat grass for my cats. And then that way, you know, if you have animals, you know that they love to chew on plants. And so I've been meaning, and it can be really expensive to buy the kits for them, um, to like grow it up. And I don't let my cats out. One, because my cat gets really mean when he deals with like all the feral cats in the neighborhood. And two, because I don't wanna let his brother out. His brother has never been outside. So what I'm gonna do with this one, this is some cat grass seeds. Now these are really big, but we've all seen like the, the nice wavy grasses that come up. And so for this, I'm just gonna sprinkle these seeds across the top of the box here. And then I'm just gonna go through and kind of push them down into the soil very lightly. They don't have to be, they don't have to be really deep. But my one cat, Frodo, he'll eat these and he'll, he'll kill this entire box within like a couple days. So I don't like to buy the kits for him just because of the fact that he, he really chews the, oh, oh, the grass a lot. <laughs> he likes to eat grass. And then I'm just going to really stock this with all the seeds that I have in the container there. Because I don't anticipate that this grass is going to live much past actually growing up to be big enough for him to chew on. So, all right. And then once we do that, we just go ahead and we wet it down again. And then there we are. And then I will set this in a window. This one might go outside because it's kind of big. The other one I'll put outside too. And when I put them outside, I will of course check them a little bit more frequently than I might the ones that are in more like a greenhouse type situation because they're gonna dry out faster. When you're starting seeds, you do want the, the soils that you start them in to be pretty moist as the seeds start to germinate. And then once, once they sprout, then you really want to just kind of monitor to make sure that you're not drowning the roots. So I haven't necessarily um, put any kind of like drainage system in here or anything like that. If you're 
going to be trying to grow in something and you're worried about too much moisture in there, you can always use rocks in the bottom too. So I bought these for a dollar at the dollar store, but these are free if you just go to this like a river or a stream and you can pick up all the rocks that you want. They're, they're in abundance. I just didn't happen to get to a stream. So I had these left over from some other stuff that I had done. And then you can layer a little bit of gravel or some of those rocks in the bottom and then put some dirt on top and then put the little plants in here. And sometimes that does help to keep your their roots up out of the, the soil or out. It gives their roots like something that it can kind of breathe in. You don't want to drown them. All right, well, I'm just going to do this here. And then I'm going to, you know, there's a couple more plants that I want to transplant here. So I can go ahead and just keep doing that. But I think that that's about it. I have a whole selection of um, things. But, you know, I would just encourage you guys to, if you really want to start gardening on kind of a low key type thing, it's, uh, it's always good to just try to um, take seeds. You can harvest seeds. And maybe, maybe toward the end of the season, if Kim is still doing this, what we can do is we can go through how to harvest seeds from plants. And you really, you have to monitor them a little bit more closely, but once you see them flower and then they get pollinated and you can see the seed pods forming, that's a good, like you wanna take note of when that happens because then you can kind of watch those. And when they start to dry out a little bit, you can always harvest them. And then it's like, you can, um, you don't have to pay for your seeds either. I never seem to be quite that observant and it comes and then it goes and I'm like, oh, I'm just going to have to buy more seeds next year. But it's, a, it's possible to do that. So, um, well, Burnett, it was really nice to see you tonight. Thank you so much for coming. I'm really glad that you were here. All right, and then now I'm just going to transplant a couple of my little my little bell peppers. And then I think that's going to be it for me. And if you guys have questions, I can try to answer them. Um, one thing that I would like to remind people of is that, you know, I, uh, my mom had a green thumb and my grandfather had a green thumb, and my brother has a green thumb. Mine's a little bit more brown, so I have to work sometimes really hard, and it can be discouraging, but what I have learned over the years is just that um, you kind of start small, and then you build up from there, and there are always, there's always some kind of plant that can actually fit into your lifestyle, something, whether it's a succulent, whether it's you know, some, a small herb garden, um, you know, kind of fill in the blank, but there, there is a little something for everyone who wants a little bit more green and in, in their house, in their office. And plants are just so wonderful. It always just makes me feel better being around them. How about every, how's everybody doing? My imaginary plants are doing great. Are they? I can't wait to meet your imaginary plants, Sarah. I'm gonna have to parade them for me. Okay. So just like with the other ones, with my bell peppers, these ones have also, the roots have really grown into the cotton. So let me very carefully. Here we are. So there's a little few wisps of cotton on there. I didn't want to give up the ghost, but we will we will just go ahead and press that little guy in there and then do that one more time. And then I think we'll be good. Okay. All right, and that is all.
I want to thank everyone for coming tonight. Does anybody have any questions? Hi, Melissa. This is June. Um, yeah. Do you have any uh, specific seed that you want to recommend, like easy to grow? Because I'm not that good at planting. I kill everything, so. <laughs> You know, that's, that's fair. And um, I do understand that. So if you go to um, Walmart, Lowe's, Home Depot, any of those, they will have multiple sets of different types of seeds. And some are a little bit more expensive than others. Now these ones I bought, this is my first time using these. But I bought these, and they're, you can see, called So Easy. And oh. yes, and these ones have a small little like coating on them that I think helps to fertilize and encourage growth in the seeds so that they grow a little better. And it's not quite as much work on you to try and make sure that they're, you know, that they sprout. But um, we'll see how that goes. I will. Uh, you know, I can post a little update if there's somewhere to post updates on how well those grow. But like this is a brand that I usually buy is Fairy Morse. And that's pretty good. And by pretty good, I mean that it has a pretty high recruitment weight. So when you um, plant the seeds, a large proportion of them will actually sprout. And uh, if you buy some of the um, it, it just is kind of hit or miss. Sometimes I have bought seed packs and I plant the seeds and it seems like I only get two or three plants out of the entire thing. But then there have been times like with these where I plant them and you know I get a return that is pretty much almost anywhere from like 80 to 100% growth. Well, I won't say 100%. None of them are 100%. I would say 80 to 90 Let's say 93.2, just because it's a weird number. <laughs> Thank so, you. Yeah, absolutely. And then if you do decide to, to use any of your produce to get your own seeds, which you can do, and might be like if you're just trying it out for the first time, um, you do have to take the seeds like from the inside of a bell pepper or even like a cucumber or a tomato. I usually will rinse them off and then you can lay them out on a plate with a little bit of paper towel and let them dry out. And these ones I let dry out for a couple weeks and then I put them inside of a bag and that was over the winter. And then now I've saved them and just this is, you know, so here for this, this was actually pretty good. Let's see, I wasn't sure because some of the produce can be kind of GMO. And if it's GMO, then the seeds aren't always as viable because they, they just don't, you know, they're not as good really at um, reproducing sometimes. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So 16 out of 17 of the seeds actually sprouted. So that's, that's actually, that's pretty good. That's a pretty good rate of return. I did throw a couple of these out though. So I probably shouldn't have done that so I could show you, but a couple of the seeds that were in here in between the layers of cotton actually developed a mold on them. And I didn't want that spreading to the other ones. So I went ahead and um, selected those out and threw those away because moldy seeds are, that's not good. You don't want mold on the seeds. After they get in the soil and they have well-established roots, we want some of those fungi to come and hang out as long as, as well as the bacteria, right? We want a nice healthy rhizosphere so that the roots are getting everything that they need. But um, when they start Inside here, mold is like not your friend. So <laughs> we had to get rid of those ones. We kicked them to the curb. But yeah, good question. Anything, anything else? No? 
I have a talent for talking and doing things at the same time. <laughs> I have to tell you right now. I can do this all night. But anyway, okay. Well, thank you so much, guys. I think that's it for me. If you do have questions, I'm always happy to try and help somebody out or answer them. And I just wish you all the luck in growing your little burgeoning gardens because it's exciting and it's fun. Well, so you're thank such you. a good teacher. I'm what? Go ahead, yeah. You're a good teacher. Yeah, that's awesome. Thank you for sharing your secret way. Yeah. <laughs> My roommate, she is a big fan of planting, so we will do soon your way. Excellent, excellent. Well, that'll be really exciting. I would love to hear how it goes. So um, I know that they put my name, but you know what, here, just in case anybody wants, this is my email. There's my email here at UAB, and I would love to help be a reference, chit chat, have socially distanced garden time. <laughs> All right, well, that is everything, guys. I would say good luck, have a wonderful night. What seeds are you going to grow, Sabrina? I see the sunflower, um, mm. squash, salad mix, and spinach. So. All right. You know, I'm going to be really interested to know how um, the salad mix goes. You know, a couple things I have never had any luck with growing are carrots. I got some carrots. Multi I got like mini ones before. Yeah. And then, uh, like, sat lettuces, I haven't really had a lot of luck with either. I think it's I think, too warm. Hmm? I think it's too warm here. Oh, yeah. I think any lettuce. of the cabbage plants, they are only really spring and or late, so, like late autumn, really. Okay. I think. So, well, that explains it then. You know. Oh, yeah. And the other thing I wanted to point out too is that on the back of these here, there are instructions that will let you know just general information about each one of the plants. So you don't even necessarily have to be like a, a botanist or a, a plant enthusiast with a huge amount of knowledge under your belt. Um, you can uh, just look at the backs and it will give you like how you should water them, how far to space the plants after the seedlings start to sprout up and what kind of sun they need. Some plants don't like a lot of sun and other plants do. And so, um, you know, that's, that's one thing to kind of consider when you're planting. If you have shadier areas of your garden or around your house, you can plant things there or transplant them after you've started them inside to areas that are not, um, that kind of match their light requirements. So that's always kind of nice as well. Just as a side note. Thank you. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, it's the third time I've said this, but I'm really this. I'm really needed now. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Good night, right. everybody. Bye. Bye. Have a wonderful. Bye. Night. Yeah, have a great day. This was fun. Thank you. Yes, you are so welcome, and it was more fun because you came. Thank you. It was so nice to meet you, and I'll look forward to hearing from you.